Now what I'm going to show you today is the new timer for my electrical setup for my single models that I've been flying already and my new twins. This is a wheel hubbing timer. It's called an FM9 Retrack because it is destined for retracks. The programming plug is attached in a moment. This plug goes off to the retracks and this plug here is to turn it all on when you're ready to go. With this you have to buy a programming box. This is very very straightforward to use. I'm going to turn it off for a moment and then I'll turn it on and show you how to use it. This is the programmer. So you press OK because it wants you to carry on. And then your flight time. So if you want a flight time, let's say of a minute 30, you could go up in second intervals to a minute 30. Once that's OK, you press OK. Then it says delay time. This d delay time is when you want the mod motor to start up from when you've armed the plugs. Usually a good delay time is 20 seconds. Then it comes throttle mode and there's different throttle modes. The one we set it on is Phoenix High, OK. And then you go, OK, now revolutions, you go up and, up and down to suit yourself. I'm running at 9,300, sorry, 9,800 at the moment, so I'll quite happily program this to 9,800 or near off. Then you press OK. Now on my latest model, I'm running retracks. So retracks up at four seconds. Usually a retracks you want is 15 seconds. That's from when the motors start up. So I go up to 15 seconds. Then it says retracks down. Now retracks down means that it's a time after the retracks come down that the, mo the, the, mo woo, the model stops. You press OK, finish. And that's as easy as it is to program the whole unit. Then you unplug the main plug from the timer and you plug your speed controller back into it. Next I'm going to show you the batteries we use. This is the battery I'm using for my new twin. This is Hobby King batteries. This is a 4-cell 4 4400 made in Hong Kong and about 18 to 20 pounds. Uh, this weighs 13 and a half ounces. You've got an XT, I've put an XT60 plug on the end but you can have any plug you like. You can order it with special plugs on it, but this one didn't come with this plug, so you just have to sold, unsolder the two connections, pull the old plug off and solder the new connections on. When you cut the old plug off, make sure you cut one wire at a time, because if you cut two wires at a time, these come with about 40% charge. The other plug that comes with it, this is for charging. This. Four, plug, four five wires, four power wires and earth. You plug this into your charger and it balances the battery as you're charging. The other thing this plug is for is when you're on the field and you've flown, you buy one of these small units from Fusion and you plug your battery into it, like so, and it comes up with 15.3 volts because this is a 14 this is a 14.8 volt battery but it does run high voltage the percentage in the bottom right hand corner is how much you've got left and then if you want to check individual cells you could go through them like in cell 1 3.8 cell 2 is 3.8 and so on obviously there's no 5 and 6 now if you've got a problem with your battery and you don't know what it is going through this now say for instance that's 3.1 or 0 cell 3 then you know you've got a duff battery today I'm going to show you the charger that we use to charge our no lipos this is a Sigma EQ Hyper 200 watt charger Cam what comes with it as well is a multi-pack for doing six batteries I'll explain a bit more about this later. Let's switch it on and what you get coming up is the amperage for charging and the voltage you need. Now if you press the green button once you could alter the amperage. You press it again now this is the voltage. 5 cell, the 5S, you can have different 2 cell, 1 cell and we're on 5 cell. So what you do is you take one of your batteries and you plug this yellow plug into the yellow holder 
like so and you plug this five pin plug into the five pin holder put it aside then you press the green button hold it down and he's doing a battery check and then you press it again and it starts charging now what this is doing this is the time this is the amperage and this is the voltage that it's charging to the actual full charge of an 18 volt battery is actually 21 volts and you just leave it until this 2 amp goes down to naught, and then it will blip at the end of the day when it's all done if you want to stop at any time just press the red button it turns it off now this is a setup I'm using for my twin my singles different but I've done that before battery we've already explained in the earlier video the motors we're using are OS motors 3815-1000 these are 1000 kV motors equivalent to approximately a 30 size motors very very powerful built-in fan 14 pole motor uh, you do not want to stick your finger in the prop with one of these going because with an IC motor if you stick your finger in a prop by accident obviously people don't do it on purposely it will stop with an OS oh, sorry electric motor it won't stop it will keep going and it will draw more power now these motors if you run it on a 6 say you want to run it at 8500 revs you put it on a 6 inch prop it will run 8500 revs you put it on a 20 inch prop it will still run 8500 revs all it will do is pull it's more power and wear the battery down the speed controls we're using a Castle Creation speed controllers, ICE 50 light. The light means there's no heat sink on it, so when you use these in the model, ensure there's plenty of airflow over them. They do get warm, but they do not get hot. The other thing we have to do is these contain a 5 amps BEC it built in. Now, as we're running two for our twin, we don't want both BECs working, otherwise, they'll work against each other. So, what we do is we take one lead out of one plug and that eliminates one BEC as you can see there's one motor there one motor there uh, two speed controllers into one you need a Y lead you could buy these I decided to make one up as I've got these loads of plugs very easy to make up just make sure that your soldering isn't done properly always use heat heat uh, heat shrink wrap just in case these short out or touch or get too close the timer we've already been through in a, a, a earlier video this one's set up this goes to the speed controllers you need a Y lead obviously for the speed two speed controllers to link into one but these are ready available from robot birds all this is radio available from robot birds except the timer uh, this plug goes to the retracts again you need a Y lead and this is your arm plug this is the plug you press when you actually want the model to start I'll explain this in the video in a minute this sits on the outside of the model if you press this again any time during the flight obviously before it takes off everything will stop retracts e-flight 10 stroke 15 retracts now the modern retracts have fastly come on leaps and bounds this has got a built-in motor with a worm drive you can't break this you can't put this down without it working uh, just a small standard RC lead no retract servos wires air reservoirs tubes pipes and everything these are just under an ounce each alloy wheels are my own and so this is the basic setup with loads of wires here but when you build them into the model this is in each nacelle in the wing these will sit in the front of the wing there and there and this will sit in the nose and the nice thing about having a big heavy battery in the nose is you could move it forward or back to get your balance now I'm going to take you through a run this is a test bench two retracts, two motors, two speed controllers timer and my arming plug and my battery so what you do is you connect your battery together first and what happens is 
the speed controllers blip and the light flashes on each because speed controller as you can see the lights are on showing that there is power and the speed controller is powered up. Now this is the actual arming plug that you have on the model outside the model. When you press this both models motors spin to tell you that there is power all the way to it. As you can see you have a five or six second delay and then the retracts will the motors will, motors will start and then the retracts will go up as you can see. Retracts up this program runs for about a minute and in that time these are running contra rotating because what you have is you can have a pusher prop on that one and a tractor prop on that one and it eliminates the model being thrown in as the two motors are spinning both, both ways. Now this, before the flight ends these motors will slightly decrease and when you're in the air the model slows down momentarily and it tells you it's about to finish. Also the retracts will come down soon after and then the whole lot will stop soon after that. It's very clinical, it works or it doesn't work. Now this is purely here to make sure there's no glitches when it's up in the air. The speed controllers are flashing away now, it's so showing that they're working. That's the decrease in power. And retracts will come down soon. There we are, perfect. And now it's ready. Finished. Now this will blip after 20 seconds, telling you that it's still armed. Now at any time it's still armed, it is in uh, a flying mode, so what you should do is disarm it. by just pulling the plug out.